In this video, we'll develop uh, the solution to Laplace's equation in spherical coordinates by the method of separation of variables. So we're interested in solving Laplace's equation for the case uh, where u depends on r, theta, and phi. So remember, r is the radius of the sphere, theta is the azimuthal angle, and phi is the polar angle. And if you write out the Laplacian in spherical coordinates, you get the following expression. Okay, and even though this looks complicated, we're gonna break it down uh, term by term using the method of separation of variables and see uh, that we can express the general solution uh, of Laplace's equation. So as usual, we're going to assume that U can be broken up into a form that uh, each dependence is independent of the other. Okay, so you have a function of r times a function of theta times a function of phi. And going through the same procedure as we usually do, plugging this into Laplace's equation and dividing through by u. Uh, we can transform this into the following expression. We're now, uh, our partial derivatives transform into ordinary derivatives because they're only acting on functions of a single variable. And remember the whole point of doing this is to transform a complicated partial differential equation into a system of ordinary differential equations that we can solve one by one. Gonna start on a new line so it's not cramped. Okay, so plugging in our trial solution uh, results in these three terms. And just like we had for the case in cylindrical coordinates, we have to be a bit careful how we assign uh, values to each one of these terms. Remember, uh, we can't assign, for example, this term to a constant because we have a theta dependence in this term. Likewise, we can't assign a constant to this term because it depends on two different variables. The only factor that we can assign to a constant is this first term over here. And then once we've done that, we can start building up the solution for the other two. So we begin with the radial equation because it's the only one that only depends on one variable. And you can see that R doesn't appear anywhere else in our equation. And we're gonna uh, define our constant uh, a little oddly. It's just for uh, later convenience. And again, the reason we know to do this is because this problem has been solved before and we can go back and change a few things to make it more convenient. 
Okay, so this strange form of the constant is purely a matter of convenience to simplify the expression later on. Okay, so L here is just a constant. If you uh, carry out the expansion of this equation, then you end up with the following ordinary differential equation, uh, which looks fairly complicated, but this is actually the form of a Cauchy Euler uh, differential equation, which has known solutions to it. So the solutions to this particular equation are of the form a r to the power l, where a is a constant, plus b r to the power minus l plus one. And the l plus one comes from this factor over here and the l comes from this factor over here. This Euler. Okay, so we found the general form of our radial solution. And now we can assign, since we assigned this term to a constant, we can go back and update this equation that we had up here and start building the solution for the other terms. So we can put a little square box around this because we'll use it later. Now, uh, we're just gonna rewrite the equation we have up here, substituting in L times L plus one for this term. So our equation now looks uh, something like this. And if you multiply both sides by sine squared, so we can get rid of this data dependence over here. The point of doing that is so we can uh, express this um, this part as a constant. We want it to only depend on a single variable. Okay, and you can see that by, by that transformation, we succeeded in making this uh, a function of a single variable and that variable doesn't appear anywhere else in the equation. So now we can make this term equal to a constant, which we'll call uh, minus m squared. We're writing it out explicitly. And uh, as before, we choose this constant out of convenience. We know it has to be uh, negative because it still needs to satisfy periodicity. This is the polar angle. So as you go around the sphere in the uh, 
and the x y plane at any height you uh, so if you have something like this you have your sphere if you start over here and you go around 2 pi you end up here so your phi dependence has to satisfy uh, that condition that if you go around by a factor of 2 pi any factor of 2 pi you have to end up with the exact same value So okay, so uh, so this should be minus m squared. So this is a second order differential equation with constant coefficients. And if you go through the motion, you find that this differential equation has solutions of the following form. So it depends on the trigonometric functions as it must to be able to satisfy uh, periodicity. And this is for m is equal to zero, one, two, et cetera. For m is equal to zero, this term goes away since sine of zero is equal to one, cosine of zero is equal, uh, sorry, sine of zero is equal to zero, cosine of zero is equal to one, so you're just left with a constant term. All right, so we have our phi dependence now. And we've associated with this term a constant, so we can go back to our equation again and re update it. And I'm just going to shift a few terms around. So we have the theta dependence over here. We brought up a sine squared, which is now multiplying the radial dependence, which we associated with this constant. And then we have our phi dependence, which we associated with this constant over here, m minus m squared. And this still has to equal to zero. So we now finally have uh, a differential equation that depends on a single variable, theta. And we're going to massage this in a certain form uh, to be able to solve it. Okay, so we'll start just by bringing this theta term over to multiply those constants. Uh, yeah, sorry, this is fine. This should be sine theta. So this term over here is our theta function. And then we're going to factor out the sine squared and divide through by sine theta. So that gets rid of this term over here. You have a sine squared theta from factoring out this term, which is being divided by sine theta from this over here. Okay. 
one of these cancels out with this one. It should be sine squared. Okay, so now we've massaged this into a form that we can uh, make a change of variables to uh, get rid of these complicated sine theta terms, essentially. To do that, we're going to define mu as cosine theta. I will make d mu d theta equal to minus sine of theta, which if we express it in terms of mu is equal to minus one minus u square square root. And we're also going to define m of mu as uh, equal to our theta function. And the reason we're doing this is because we want to re-express uh, this, which depends on theta, on something that depends on our new variable mu. And I won't go through the details, but if you make these substitutions in to this differential equation, you end up with something that looks like this. Okay, so we've transformed this differential equation, which had these complicated sine theta terms into this differential equation, which uh, still looks a little complicated, but this is actually a very popular and known differential equation known as the associated Legendre equation. And as the name implies, this was uh, solved most generally by uh, Legendre. And the solutions are known as the associated Legendre fun functions. So it's some constant. The first one is usually denoted by P superscript M subscript L of our parameter mu. And the second one, we multiply in general by some constant is denoted by Q M L of mu. Okay, and uh, in the next video, we'll look at some properties of these functions and how, uh, as you can suspect by now, these will satisfy certain orthogonality conditions that will be useful to us in solving differential equations. So uh, this, in essence, encodes our theta dependence for uh, our differential equation. in terms of these polynomials. Okay, so we have all three dependencies for Laplace's equation, the radial uh, dependency, the phi dependency and the theta dependency from which we can build up our general solution. Before we do that, we'll look at some 
some of the properties of these functions in the next video so we know how to work with them.